Dr. Mindy here, and I'm back with more science. And today's science is really cool about autophagy and coffee. So as a, if you've been following me for some time, we talk all things fasting, all things diet variation on my channel. And one of the most common questions we get is, will coffee take me out of a fast? What, where can I drink coffee? Should I put butter in my coffee? Like we have had so many coffee questions. So I'm really excited in this video to bring you what science is saying about autophagy and coffee. So get ready. I'm gonna walk you through the different pieces of the study and then we'll talk about how you can use coffee in a really healthy way and when is coffee not healthy. I think that's a really important thing for us to address. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm really excited to bring you guys all the science we can find on fasting and diet variation and really help empower you to believe in your body again because that's one of the greatest benefits of fasting is only you can do it and you get to step back and watch how miraculous your body is. So welcome, hit the subscribe button and if you love this video, share it out into the world. We are dedicated, my, me and my team, we are dedicated to giving you guys information that is backed in by science, incredibly effective and can really transform your health. So excited that you're here. Okay, let's dive into it. So let's go through the, what the title of the study is because it's interesting. I want to talk about when the study was done and we'll talk a little bit about human versus animal study. So the title of the study, we'll put it in the notes, is Coffee Induces Autophagy in Vivo. So that means that they are finding coffee can actually stimulate autophagy. We also know 17 hours of fasting can stimulate, can stimulate autophagy. So this is good news for those of us who like to drink coffee in the morning and we still want to get the benefits of autophagy. This study was done, it was published in Cell Cycle in 2014. So it's not really a huge like new study, um, but it, I think it really applies to those of us that are trying to stimulate autophagy right now, especially if you've seen the videos that I've done on how stimulating autophagy can improve your immune system. So we gotta kinda unpack where coffee fits into this. Okay, so that's the title. Now, let me dive into some key points. Whenever you come to a study, I always go to the abstract first to just get the overview of what the study is saying. And in some cases, these studies are really heady and difficult to even understand what the philosophy or, or result was. But in this study, it's actually just, I'm gonna read you the abstract because it's pretty profound. This is what it said. Studies and clinical trials revealed that chronic consumption of coffee, so drinking coffee all the time, is associated with an inhibition of several metabolic diseases. That means that it is associated with turning off the, uh, the progression of several metabolic diseases. This is a very good thing. It's also known as through studies as well to reduce your overall and cause specific mortality. What? So it makes you actually live longer? That's what that means. That's kind of cool. And then they go on to say that we show that both natural and decaffeinated brands of coffee trigger autophagy in mice. Okay, so it's a mouse study, it's not a human study. I will talk about a coffee in human studies here in a moment. So one to four hours after coffee consumption, we observed an increase in an autophagic flux. So you get a, remember we're not trying to stimulate autophagy all the time, but it really can help to bring up uh, the autophagy levels of your cells, specifically in three organs, your liver, your muscles, and your heart. So this, remember that their autophagy is happening in cells at different times in different parts of your body. So go back and watch the video that I did on autophagy dysfunction and how it affects our respiratory system. This one is geared towards autophagy and the, in our liver cells, our muscle cells, and our, and our heart cells. And the liver, you guys, those of you trying to get into ketosis, the liver is your fat burning organ. This is a very important organ that we need to be healthy. I dug in deeper because the, the line that really was interesting to me is it doesn't matter about the caffeine. 
that's good news. If you don't want to drink caffeinated coffee, maybe decaf would work for you. But there's a specific kind of coffee I want you guys to focus in on. So, so um, sit tight for a second. Why they think that a coffee stimulates autophagy is because it is packed with polyphenols. Now, I want to point out that as much as we are excited about this kind of study, you also can get polyphenols in other things like dark chocolate, um, olives, a lot of spices like cloves uh, um, are really great. Um, red wine, even at, you know, this is why we're fans of dry, of dry farm wines, because even red wine uh, without chemicals in it can have an autophagy effect in low doses, okay? So it's the polyphenols that makes a difference. Now, the study goes on to say that there is encouraging research beyond autophagy that is showing that coffee can be helpful, and these are human studies, to reduce cancer, heart disease, respiratory disease, stroke, diabetes, and infections. They even went on in the study, and you, again, you can go link it to say that coffee has been proven to help uh, with liver, breast, endometrial, prostate, and colon cancer. And that it's really dose dependent. They, the study said that once you hit six cups a day, these benefits go away. Okay, I'm just gonna say, please don't have six cups a day. That, that's not gonna be of benefit for you. But outside of autophagy, coffee can have these effects on those diseases. Now, here's the catch, okay? And this is really important before you go rush out to your local coffee sh shop. When you go into the study, it talked about how it was non-toxic coffee. This is the key because going to Starbucks or Pete's or wherever you, your local shop is, is packed with chemicals and that is not going to be a health benefit. But when you're doing non-toxic coffee, like the ones we love is Camino Islands. If you go to Dr. Mindy's Favorites on my webpage, you can find a link for Camino Islands. We love companies that have ma made a commitment to make sure that they don't use any toxins in the, um, the brewing of the coffee, but also, and the roasting of the beans, but also are dedicated to getting beans from crops that haven't been sprayed. Coffee beans are one of the most heavily pesticide sprayed harvests. We do not, you do not want to be drinking a cup full of pesticides. That is not going to stimulate autophagy. So this study was only done for non-toxic coffee. I feel like I should have probably said that in the beginning because this is the most important part. This information is so exciting for us, who, those of us that wanna keep going with our fasting, but it has to be non-toxic. And we'll talk about cream in your coffee here in a moment. So here's the question I had to ask myself after the, I looked at this study was, okay, so should we all go rush out and start drinking a ton of coffee? And I really feel like the answer is no. So let's talk about how we can strategically use a study like this for our fasting lifestyle. So first thing, if you are doing autophagy fasting, meaning you're gonna go 17 hours without food, you have to remember that putting cream in your coffee, this doesn't talk about any cream here, will take you out most likely, I would say there's a large chance it's gonna take you out of autophagy. So if you wanna stimulate autophagy every day or most days, you're gonna to need to ditch the cream, ditch the sugar, or the for sure you have to ditch the sugar, but ditch the butter. If you're putting oils, MCT oils or butter, you're gonna to need to get rid of that, just a pure black cup of coffee um, that's non-toxic. Okay, now we're in the ballpark of being able to use this kind of study to enhance our fasting effects. So just take note on that. Second thing I wanna point out is that if you have adrenal fatigue, like if you're not drinking coffee right now and maybe you have adrenal fatigue, diving into more coffee is not the answer to get more autophagy. So I really wanna emphasize how important it is to make sure that if you're adrenal fatigued, a little bit of coffee, maybe a half a cup might be good, maybe a cup, but this is not an, an article that is giddy, giving us free license to start to just drinking cup after cup after cup 
Personally, I think that anything over two cups is now taxing on the adrenals. If you're a woman over 40, you have to remember also that after 40, our adrenals are making sex hormones. I wrote about this in the menopause reset. So it's really important that we're not all of a sudden gripping cup after cup after cup all day long, okay? And then the last one, and this one is really tricky and I just wanna be clear on this. Autophagy and ketosis are different. So for some of you, you go and have your black cup of coffee, it may continue to keep you and stimulating autophagy, but it may kick you out of ketosis. If you don't understand what that means, go watch the video that I did comparing autophagy and ketosis. So this is applicable to those of you that are feel like you're doing everything right, you're not seeing those ketones on, the, on your reader, and you really want the benefits of ketosis, and maybe you want the benefits of autophagy. So for some of us, we're gonna need to test this black coffee against our blood sugar. So what you would do is you would take a blood sugar reading, drink your black coffee, half an hour later, take another blood sugar reading. If they're very equal, then it's probably not only keeping, enhancing your autophagy effects, but it's also probably keeping you in ketosis. So those are my real three warnings before you guys get really excited and you just wanna drink a ton of coffee. I wanna put those three um, bumpers in place because this study is very encouraging and we need to make sure that we're doing coffee right. So. As always, this information I hope is life-changing. Give me feedback, let me know um, if this kind of stuff is helpful. I'm trying to bring you more applicable information mixed with the science so that we can all get the most out of our fasting lifestyle. If you love this kind of information um, and you're over 40 and you're a woman, this is the explanations that I gave in the menopause reset. So go to Amazon, pre-order the menopause reset. And when you send us a confirmation that you have ordered the book, we will send you a free digital copy. So it is available on pre-order right now. And for women over 40, we love coffee. Coffee can be amazing and we wanna make sure that we're doing it right. And for the rest of you, you might not have to think about your hormones as sensitively as women do. So as always, you guys, I hope you love the information and I wish I had a cup of coffee to cheers you. So cheers to our morning cup of coffee.